Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Jaltest webinar. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the probably most relevant technical and uh, technological implement in the heavy duty industry, that is the after treatment systems. Uh, well, a technology that started with us in 2004, and nowadays, uh, well, I'm pretty sure you, all of you know what I'm what I'm talking about is uh, a new system, new components, and well, a new world for the way we are repairing. Okay. Uh, today, as I said before, I have the pleasure of being here with my with my colleague Alex, that will be taking care of you through the chat. So please, if you have any question and you want to participate, don't hesitate to to contact us. Uh, uh, during the presentation, he will be answering every question. Okay. So, first of all, uh, we will discuss about the the heavy duty challenges, uh, how that uh, new systems impact in the way we are repairing, how we are managing the, the fleets, and after that, uh, we are going to have a look in the evolution of this technology in terms of uh, reduction of emissions, new components, new standards, and so on. And after that, we will highlight some of the main maintenance and why it is essential to have a diagnostics tool uh, to work in all these new components and systems and keep our tracks working uh, at its best uh, condition. Okay. After that, uh, we will do a, a quick overview about what is coming on uh, on the heavy duty industry. Uh, so the future that this uh, uh, now it, it's becoming nowadays. I mean, the, this future that uh, year after year is becoming more present with electrical car uh, cars, electrical trucks, and, and new new equipment. Okay. So let's start with the evolution of these systems. Okay. Uh, in this uh, in this slide, I would like to highlight how the increase of technology has been always related to the emission control. Okay. So since uh, the end of the last century, uh, the, the social awareness about the, the emissions, the NOx uh, that we are sending to the, the atmosphere and, and the contamination of the companies is being a, a political and a social matter. For this reason, uh, we are uh, the, the, the heavy duty industry is increasing the technology to be able to be more efficient and control better the track emissions. This uh, emission control has uh, become a uh, law enforcement in the last uh, years with new standards and new uh, uh, restrictions in the in the way the our tracks are running on the roads okay also regarding technological we uh, technology we are adding uh, not only new systems but also new uh, computers and new ways of working like uh, telematics and other sensors that are helping us to control not only the emission, but also the performance of our tracks to be able to be more uh, efficient and to work better in our routes in an our daily tasks. Okay. So this new environment uh, has impact a lot uh, on the heavy duty way of, of working. Okay. So this has changed and modified the, the way we are repairing our tracks. For many companies, uh, that situation has become a, a real challenges and, and has become a, a real problem in, in, in some in, in some shops and some uh, fleet companies because, well, uh, these new systems are expensive. We are investing uh, money and time in learning how to work with them. Uh, we are also needing a new uh, a new profile of, of of employee, a new profile of mechanic that is the electromechanic. Uh, and also, we are depending most of the time for, uh, on third parties for being able to repair uh, our our tracks. Okay, so it's becoming a little bit more complex the way we are working with our tracks, and we are losing in some way uh, a little bit the freedom. Okay, in way in the way we are repairing. Regarding fleet companies, of course, this new system has had a, a, a big impact as well because. Um, this after treatment system uh, require uh, a special maintenance, repairs. We have more components. We have to invest a little bit more in maintenance and spare parts. And especially, I think that is the big uh, challenges of, for, for fleet management are the downtimes. Okay, these uh, after treatment systems, time by time, as for uh, force regions, city rates, etc., to uh, um, 
to keep our tracks running because, uh, well, the, uh, as uh, probably you know, these systems uh, works in a way that block the performance of the engine if the emissions uh, go over the, the rate, okay? So, uh, in some words, uh, the, the landscape that we are having in, in the industry is that we are need we are going to need a diagnostics tool. We are going to need uh, a computer to be able to communicate with the system, to be able to perform these uh, regions, these resets, and these actions in order to, to, to gain that uh, freedom and to be able to, to do the work by our own, okay? So it is very important that, because there is another issue or another challenge when we are working with this system is that every manufacturer has a different ECMs, has a different way of communicate, and we have to find uh, a solution that has, is able to communicate with all of them or that is uh, able to uh, perform that reset or perform that actions and test with the regardless the the make or, or, or the system okay so uh, let's go back a little bit on time and I would like to see the evolution of this situation to understand better where we are and where we are going, okay? So now we are gonna see the after treatment evolution. And I would like to start going back to 1985, okay? So 30 years ago, uh, where the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, started to determine uh, the maximum uh, NOx or uh, nitrogen on, uh, oxides among that were allowed to be exhausted to the air, okay? After that, in 1988, uh, sorry, in 1989, uh, the EPA agency as well uh, include the suit or the particulate matter uh, to this regulation list. So uh, these uh, suit sense, uh, these suit uh, particulates are, as you may know, the the CO2 and the monoxide of carbon. Okay. Since then, the limitations have been set to meet the stricter parameters. Okay. And since that moment, uh, as you can see in the graphs that you have in your screen, uh, the, that standards or that restrictions have become more and more uh, high level standards, okay? So for example, uh, from 1990 to 2004, the industry reduced mainly uh, dot so to dot uh, particulate matter. And from the EPA uh, 04 that was launched in 2004, to 2010, the main focus of the industry was on the on the <coughs> on the uh, NOx uh, particulates. Okay. After that, uh, well, uh, we are more working on the on, on reducing the CO2 emissions. And for example, right now we are in the greenhouse gas 20, uh, 21 uh, standardization, and uh, the the manufacturers are focusing on improving the diesel injection and controlling better the combustion. So let's have a look about how these uh, laws enforcement, how these uh, uh, different standards and different ways of, of developing the, the, the engines and, and, and the performance of the tracks has created a new technology and new systems that now are uh, well, very famous in our industry. Starting in 2004 with the implementation of the EGR, the exhaust gas recirculation, and the DOC, the diesel oxidation catalyst, okay? As you can see, these two systems uh, had a, a great impact in the reduction of the NOx, sense, of the NOx um, uh, levels in the atmosphere, okay? Uh, and well, that's it because, uh, well, probably you know, uh, the first one, the EGR, uh, it's a, a system that uh, recirculate the gases from the engine to the engine again to do a double combustion in order to, to reduce that NOx. And also the DOC, the diesel oxidation catalyst, uh, was a, well, it's a, an after treatment component that is designed to convert carbon monoxide and uh, hydrocarbons into carbon dioxide, okay, and water. After that, uh, in 2007, we have another great uh, integration, and this one was the DPF, okay? Many people think that the DPF and the DOC are the same systems. As you can see in your screen, are part of the same uh, 
uh, after treatment system, but are different components, okay? So the DPF is a filter, uh, the diesel particular filter, of course, is a filter that traps particulate matter such as soot and ash in order to reduce this amount of, of soot in the atmosphere, okay? So in 2007, this system uh, become a standard in all the uh, engines of the on-road industry. And also in this year, in 2007, the OBD1 uh, standard of communication turned it into OBD2. Uh, this uh, implement also had an impact in the ways of working and the ways of we are uh, connecting with our tracks because allows to have uh, all these sensor, all these components detected better with a better communication protocol and a, and a better capability to diagnose and work with them. So that is also that also had an impact in how we reduce the emissions because as we are better in communicating with the component and we are better to to work in that uh, with that sensors we can also uh, diagnose and repair better. So this uh, OBD2 uh, implementation was another big impact in the industry in, in 2007. Well, after that was the apparition of the SCR, the Selective Catalytic Reduction, that makes also a great impact in the industry. This system injects the diesel exhaust fluid, the DEF, to reduce NOx particles in the exhaust uh, gases and converts these uh, NOx gases into uh, N2 and water, okay? An interesting fact of uh, this EPA 10 in 2010 uh, was uh, that two of the biggest American manufacturers uh, had uh, many problems working with these new SCR systems. And for example, Caterpillar couldn't reach the emissions restrictions levels and stopped uh, the manufacturing of uh, engines uh, for the on-road industry. So in 2009, Caterpillar stopped it to, uh, to manufacture um, uh, tracks engines, okay? However, in 2013, Caterpillar launched a joint venture with Navistar, creating the, uh, the CT series, uh, well, uh, engines that reaches these um, emissions uh, standards or emissions levels with the model, for example, the CT 11, CT13, and CT15, uh, okay? Actually, Navistar, the, the other company that was in that joint venture, was also one of the most affected companies uh, in that uh, 2010. But instead of stopping making engines, uh, Navistar decided to pay a fee for every engine that the, the company manufactured. So during almost three years, Navistar was paying a tax to the government per engine sold. Nowadays, of course, the situation has changed. And with the creation of the N-series engines that uh, appear in the EPA 13 in 2013, Navistar is, uh, is sweeping that uh, standards and is, uh, well, as you may know, the developing engines that, of course, uh, follow the emissions uh, that the government is enfor enforcing. The systems mentions uh, reduce the carbon monoxide and the near, uh, NOx uh, <laughs> gases. But nowadays, the force of the industry, as I said before, are going more to reduce the uh, impact of the COT, uh, CO2 sorry, by monitoring the combustion, improving the injection, and adding more sensors or even telematic solution to adjust and improve not only the, in the engine performance, but also the driving habits, okay? So that's where we are right now going and that's what the new engines are bringing to the market, okay? All right, according to the SCR technology, I would like to highlight that in the American market, we are we will only find two different models of SCR pumps, okay? The Well, actually there are three, but the first one that is the Dinox 2.1 is uh, a European, the, uh, system that is only available in the Mercedes engines that are in the off-highway industry. So mainly in the on-road industry, in the trucks industry, we are going to find two. The Dinox uh, 2.2 that is manufactured by Bosch and is a, a pump that uh, has um, brands like Cummins, uh, Packard, Navistar, Mac, and Volvo. Uh, for example, Cummins uh, with the EPA 10 and, and 13 has this uh, Bosch uh, 
pump or packer also with that uh, the, with the, in the same years okay so till 2013 after that uh, what we have is the uh, new generation that could be the ecofit ul2 the one you have in your in your screen right now that is a, a pump that is uh, used by Cummins, Detroit Diesel, Packard, and Navistar, okay? In Navistar, for example, uh, in the A2, A26. Well, there are other uh, pumps in the industry. For example, we have uh, another one in Detroit Diesel that uh, was the based in the Mercedes uh, model of Europe that has a, a, a system based on the, on the AdBlue or the DEF. But after that, the uh, Detroit Diesel, uh, in the greenhouse gas um, 14, pass it to use the Ecofit UL2. All right. So after seeing this uh, technology, these systems, I would like to 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 have a, a look in how a diagnostic solution help to keep these systems working in good conditions and to be able to, to improve the, the maintenance and the way our tracks are performing, okay? So for the reason, well, as you as you already know, we, we manufactured Jaltes Diagnostics, that is a solution for all makes and all systems and have uh, a, a great capabilities for these after treatment systems, okay? So for example, uh, uh, in this uh, slide, I, I would like to show key actions that are the most, the most demanded by the industry in the United States uh, that are covered in, in Jaltes for all the systems. So, I mean, regardless the, the manufacturer, if you are working with Cummins, Packard, Detroit Diesel, Navistar, or, or, or any other uh, engine, you will find this type of, of test, this type of key actions that are very demanded in the industry, okay? So, uh, for example, uh, oh, hold on. Yeah, so for example, the SDR efficiency test, that is a, a test that allows to check the efficiency of the SCR catalyst. Uh, it takes around 90 minutes. It's available, for example, in Cummins. And what this test consists is uh, warming up the uh, DEF metering system for performing a, a test there. Also checking the NOx sensors and the SCR catalyst. So during 90 minutes, uh, the diagnostics tool gonna check all the sensors performing different actions, rising temperatures, et cetera, to being able to see if the uh, NOx that uh, goes into the, the, the SCR is reduced by the catalyst after in the outlet sensor after the SCR catalyst, okay? Also, for example, we have another test that is the, is the DEF quality test that uh, checks mainly the, the thing I said before, the inlet and outlet levels of, of NOx in the air to determine if the DEF is working correctly, okay? So for example, if we have an engine that uh, has uh, 1,600 1, particulate per million detected in the inlet uh, sensor before the catalyst, we are gonna need to have uh, a 70% less of this uh, particulate after the uh, SCR uh, system. What I mean, this check, uh, what, I, what it's gonna do is uh, check if we are, uh, if, if our DEF is working properly, okay? So I'm go I would like to, to check, for example, the EGR, the rate in the software. So now I'm gonna connect to, to, uh, to the software to show you that capabilities in Jaltes, okay? So let me go back. Let me go to the software one second. All right. So for example, in Packard, uh, there is a fold that is very common. That is the P1496, uh, that when it's active for more than 10 hours, uh, the core appear in our dashboard, in our, in our instrumenter cluster. And we are gonna need this, uh, uh, EGR uh, D rate, okay? Also uh, on the same uh, engine, we have also the code P1518 and P151A that is related to the DEF in which after 10 hours, if we have still that uh, fold active, we are gonna need also to do this uh, disable of the DEF instead of disable, disabling the, 
the the EGR to uh, make the uh, the track um, stop the inducement mode, this power reduction. So basically, it's a reset. Okay. So what we are going to do is uh, doing a reset in the ECM to allow our track going back to the the regular uh, capabilities. Okay. So let's go to 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 Packer just to show you how easy it is in JAL test. We go to Packer. We are going to go to MX engines. Once here, let's click on uh, EPA 10. Uh, this uh, engine for 2010-2011. Uh, and once we connect to the engine, well, we select the type of connection. Once we connect to the engine, we are going to go to maintenance, all right? And once here, we have the disable the EGR power reduction. That is the action that I was mentioned uh, right now, OK? So here, JAL test always work, uh, as you may note, in three steps. The first one is uh, an explanation of the action that we are going to carry out. In this case, explain what I said before, that the this uh, disable of the EGR power reduction will allow you to, 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 to have your track in the initial conditions before that's the inducement mode, and when this fault appear, OK? After that, we are going to have the initial conditions. So that means what the ECM ask for being able to, to perform the action. And once we fit uh, these initial conditions, we can jump to the action. Okay, this is going to be an automatic uh, reset. And after processing this uh, this reset, we will have back our our track uh, in the in the road. We only need to clear the fault from the from the ECM by going to uh, clear fault codes. All right. So. Um, basically, uh, with Jaltes, we are we are having all the coverage we need uh, for all the systems. These type of actions are not are not only available in Packard, also in in the rest of the systems. And for example, here uh, I, I I I would like to highlight the the most common fault in the American industry. That is a fault that the, that appears in Detroit Diesel. That is the one you have in your screen, the SPN five two zero three seven two. Uh, that is uh, well it's a, a fault related also to the to the df metering uh, in which uh, we have a value too high uh, and, it, and as i said before is uh, the most common fault for the trade diesel greenhouse gas 14 and 17 engines so in in engines from 2014 till nowadays it's the most common fault this code is uh, caused by the the df dosing fault and it can be related to an incorrect NOx sensor values or an, an appropriate, uh, sorry for that, uh, an, an appropriate DF pump revolution or a DF uh, metering itself. Okay, so uh, thanks to Jaltes Diagnostics, we can go to that uh, engine and we can we are going to have a, a troubleshooting that will allow us to to identify that problem and how to fix it. Okay, I'm going to go back to the software just to show you how it works. In this case, we are going to go to Detroit Diesel. DD series. And we are going to go to, um, uh, what's done on these ones? Yeah, this one is OK. Hold on. We are going to go, oh, sorry, no, we, are, we have to go to, my bad, sorry. We have to go to to after treatment. Yeah, here and once here, instead of going to instead of connecting to the engine, we have to connect to the after treatment. All right. Once we connect, we are gonna find the same menu, but now we are working with the joint instead of working with Packard. And once here, uh, we can carry out the action uh, by reading for, uh, read four codes, but I'm going to go to the manual diagnostics so I can show you the troubleshooting we have for for this uh, for this specific fault. Okay, so let's go here. So I don't know if you know manual if you are familiar with manual diagnostics. Manual diagnostics allow us to to check faults even if we are not connecting to, to a specific engine. So 
the only thing we have to, to do is reading the instructions. In this case, we have to type here default, okay? And then where uh, Jaltes is gonna show us uh, different components related to the fault. For example, here, as I said before, this fault is uh, related to the DF, DF uh, metric model. And Jaltest provide us additional information. That's why we say that we are providing a, a, an advanced diagnostic solution because we are not only providing you the fault, we also provide you uh, real pictures of the components to allow you to find them uh, more easier. Uh, more easily, uh, also the pinouts to identify, to identify how this component is communicating with the ECM, some operational values, and also, for example, uh, hyperlinks to components replacement guides to be able to replace that uh, that DF metric model if needed. Okay. As well, we have the option of diagrams in order to be able to to identify how is the communication between the component and the ECM. Okay. Through these uh, schematics, we are going to see, uh, well, not only the whole system, but we can jump to, to specific uh, components and sensors through the whole after treatment system in which we are connected. And here is very interesting, well, information that Jaltes provide, okay, because it's going to uh, save us a lot of time when we are working with these after treatment systems, because we will be able to identify the pins of the sensors that are communicating with the ECM and also how the ECM is communicating with them. So, I mean, for example, in this case, we are gonna, uh, we are gonna need to check the socket X2 of the ECM and the pins 199, 84, 22, 3, 33, and 28. That are the ones that are communicating with the component. So if, for example, we are having a problem um, uh, uh, with, the, with the component and, and, and we see that is because one cable is broken, a pin is not working, or there is not a power supply, Maybe uh, the, the the repairing of that is, is is very cheap. The only problem here is the time, no? Because we are gonna uh, spend a lot of time finding the pins, uh, etc. So for this reason, Jaltes is gonna be very helpful. We double click on the ECM, and we only have to go to the socket that we are looking for. In this case, the X2, and then the pins in which we have the numbers to identify those that are communicating. In this case, with the pump of the of the DEP. Okay. So for example, gonna be the the pin 100, etc. Again, if we are having a problem with the with the ECM, Jaltes show us the minimum voltage, operational values that we can check, and after that, the components replacement guides to be able to to replace not only the pump but also the the ECM itself. Okay. So it's a, a total solutions that jump from the diagnostics to the bidirectional test, but also keep you in the same platform uh, the technical information. Uh, travel shooting guides, uh, replacement guides, etc., to be able to 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 work by your own and not depend on third parties and be become an expert in all these after treatment systems, regardless of the manufacturer. The last thing I would like to show you regarding this fault, for example, is the travel shooting by coach. Okay, in this case, we have uh, basic steps that uh, one after one uh, gonna show us and bring some 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 lights on how we can repair the the fault, okay? So I'm gonna spend all the steps. Well, the only thing we have to do is reading that and just test this, uh, well, letting us know how we can um, uh, fix that issue and how what, the, what are the components we should verify and check, okay? So we have hyperlinks to actions, technical information, real pictures, etc. okay? So, Let's go back to the presentation. Now I would like to, to show you a more recent and, and, and actions that we have in, in Jaltest. Of course, the most famous one that is the DPF regeneration, but we are not only providing that, we have also SCR regeneration. That is the process is the same. It's raising the temperatures of the system itself to in this in the case of the DPF to uh, to, to remove the, the shoot of the um, of the filter. Uh, for uh, allowing the track to going back to 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 the regular performance, okay. Also, well, we have uh, ECR replacement, DPF replacement, and DOC replacement. Those tests are basically resets, and um, and are very interesting. For example, when uh, when we are when we need uh, to carry out a region and we are not um, having the values 
uh, that the ECM is uh, requiring because for example, maybe the, the suit levels are too high. So the, the recommendation would be to, to change the filter, but if not, we, we can do a, a reset of the values of the, of the suit um, levels for being able to carry out the action. So I'm gonna go back to, to Jaltes to show you this uh, coverage. In this occasion, we are gonna connect to Cummins, okay? Let's go to ISX, a very popular engine in the on-road industry. <laughs> Here we have also the option of manual diagnostics if you want to check a, a specific fault. And once here, we are gonna go to maintenance, all right, in order to see this, uh, this uh, reset and these uh, regions, okay? So let's go to maintenance, and here we have DPF regions, SCR efficiency test. Also, we have the DOC maintenance and DPF maintenance. Let's click, for example, on the DPF replacement. Okay, this action, this uh, uh, SCR replacement, DPF replacement, or DOC replacements are the action needed when we are changing a component or a sensor or, or the filter itself or, or, or every every system or component we modify on the after treatment, we have to perform a reset to allow the ECM knows that we have modified something there. So for this reason, when we do that, the ECM understand that the suit levels also has uh, go to zero because we have a new piece of equipment on the track. So that's why I said before that we have a, a, a way to, to, to carry out the, the regions by doing this reset, okay, that is, here, okay. So once again, we have uh, initial condition, uh, sorry, uh, information about the action we are gonna carry out. So here, for example, we are informing the ECM that the DPF has been replaced, okay. So after reading that, uh, we have the initial condition again, and we do the reset, okay. We wait for one minute and 10 seconds uh, with the key uh, unlock position in order to allow the, the ECM perform the reset. And after waiting that, we have here a, a, a clock that wanna help us to, to take control of that time. The action is, uh, is over, okay? So three basic steps, very easy. The way that this works is the same regardless the, the manufacturer, regardless the, the, the system we are performing, is always three steps, information about the action, initial conditions, and then the carry out of the action. If we need additional information, for example, let's have a look what we have for the region. If we need additional information, well, here we have uh, the information about the temperature we are rising, the time it's gonna take, etc. Initial conditions again. And then, for example, uh, when we are rise, uh, performing the action, Jaltes show us additional information. Here we can monitor the different values while we are performing the region. We are gonna have some lamps to check if we are having issues or not, some warnings additional information on the question mark, and we can add some comments also during the whole presentation, during the whole regeneration. So uh, basically is a, a, a total diagnostic solution that allow you to, to, to carry out all, all the actions uh, that your tracks uh, may need, okay? So let's go back to the presentation. And let's see, uh, and let's uh, conclude the webinar with uh, what is coming uh, to the industry, okay? So, well, as I said before, the greenhouse gas uh, 21 has come with the improvement on the injection of the, of the engines in order to be able to reduce these uh, CO2 emissions. And in the future, we are gonna work on the same way, okay? Uh, it's already planned the, the uh, GHG24 and GHG27 that uh, as the numbers say it's going to appear here in, in the following years 2024 2027 and are going to focus uh, mainly on that okay so these new um, uh, standardizations are going to work not only on the injection as I said before but also implementing more sensors more uh, computers in the tracks and, and improving not only the performance of the engine, but also the the, the habits in which, in, will, in which we are driving, okay? So the final war, uh, goal of the industry is to arrive to uh, zero emissions or be here or uh, um, to that levels um, <clears throat> in order to, well, to 
to work uh, to drive more efficiency efficiently to to inject the diesel in a better way and be more eco-friendly okay also well we are gonna have more law uh, enforcement uh, for example we have more states and, and federal uh, zero programs uh, we have more uh, we are working on that direction so there are many uh, states that are uh, following the the way that the california started in in the 19th with these uh, programs for zero emissions and for example we have now washington we have uh, colorado we have uh, uh, well many other com um, Oregon, many other states that are following this uh, enforcement of the law to make the, the fleet companies and the, the trucks industry uh, become more eco-friendly and uh, with less impact in the, in the atmosphere. Uh, also, uh, another thing that we are seeing in the industry in the last year and is becoming even more popular is the uh, uh, gas uh, natural gas uh, engines okay the the cng tracks okay for example uh, we have uh, many different models of cummings like the l9n uh, the islg and the isx12 um, are some of these uh, examples of 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 uh, natural gas sorry of natural gas engines and uh, well then nowadays we we have uh, many fleets that are working on that way and it's becoming more popular. For example, in big cities, we have uh, refurbished and recycling companies that have many, many trucks uh, with these uh, engines. Why they are doing this? Well, it's because uh, different studies shows that the, the CNG engines reduce the greenhouse, uh, 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 reduce the gas emissions in a, up to 20% compared to diesel engines, okay? So it's another way to be able to follow the standards of the, of the GHG uh, laws by uh, modifying the track and implementing these uh, CNG uh, engines. Uh, well, also uh, there are new competitors in the market. Uh, there are new uh, new tracks. We are uh, arriving to a world in which, the, in which the electronic systems are not only in the cars, in the passengers industry, but also in the heavy duty industry. For example, uh, well, we have new competitors, new new manufacturers. We have BYD, that is a Chinese company that is becoming very popular in cities like San Francisco or New York. Uh, well, more futurist tracks like, uh, for example, Tesla and Nikola. And also the new models, like for example, the Volvo Light, that is the low impact green heavy transport solution of Volvo heavy duty or the e cascadian okay after that uh, well this is what we are uh, having nowadays in the industry what is becoming more popular once again the the direction of the industry is uh, to in integrate more computer and more sensors in the engine so uh, at the end uh, what we are arriving is in a world that the diagnostics tool is uh, mandatory and we are going to need uh, this type of, of solutions for for working in these new sensors, okay? So, well, we would like to, to let you know that you can do it yourself with child test. We can, you, you can be ready for the future with a diagnostic solution with child test. Uh, and also that we have a telematic solutions that works in that direction, allowing you to perform, for example, regions remotely to, to uh, monitor the different uh, emissions of your track and your fleet and that our all makes solution is working on that way and is providing you the best coverage on the aftermarket um, market uh, for allowing you to 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 work uh, by yourself and with more independence and be ready with the technical information and the bidirectional tests that uh, are needed in these after treatment systems okay so thank you very much for your attention uh, now i'm gonna have a look to the chat if uh, i can solve some of the questions however uh, if you can uh, if, if I want to ask for your email and, and we can uh, contact there to our engineering team that can also help you with uh, some of the questions, okay? So once again, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. And see you around in the next uh, webinars.